How the charger controller IC works on the laptop motherboard. In order for the laptop to turn on, the laptop needs a power source. The power source in the laptop comes from the AC adapter and battery. From these two power sources, the laptop can choose which source to use. As an example, when we plug the AC adapter into the DC jack, the laptop will change the power source that originally came from the battery to the AC adapter. And if we remove the AC adapter the laptop will automatically move the power source from the battery back. Switching the power selector between the battery and the AC adapter in the charger block circuit occurs so quickly that it does not affect the running system. Who regulates the transfer of the power source between the AC adapter and the battery? The answer is a charger block circuit, which is controlled by a charger controller IC. Let's look at the shape of the charger IC, in this video we use the ISL88731C charger IC as an example. The ISL88731C IC has 28 pins and a 28 LDTQFN package. After we see the simple diagram, let's try to see the schematic of the charger block circuit. In this video using the Toshiba C800 laptop schematic, with the quanter board code dabi 3 cmb 80 Part 1, Laptop Voltage Simulation in the Charger Block Circuit when it's on only using batteries. When the laptop battery is plugged in, the BAT-V line will have an electric voltage of 11.1 volts. This voltage comes from the battery. Because there is no voltage on the VIN line, Electric current will flow to the points at the feet of the drain MOSFET PQ5002 and sources MOSFET PQ5005. Pay attention to the MOSFET PQ5002 and PQ5005. In this condition, the P-channel MOSFET PQ5002 and the N-channel PQ5005 MOSFET are still not active, because there is no trigger on both pin gates. Even if the MOSFET PQ5002 is active for a while because the gate pin is 0 volt in less than nanoseconds, the MOSFET will return to non-active because current flows through PR3. If the gate voltage is the same as the source's pin on the PQ5002 MOSFET, the MOSFET is in a non-active or close position. Then how electric current can pass through PQ5002 and PQ5005? Let's look at the schematic again. In the internal MOSFET PQ5002 and PQ5005 there is a diode symbol, this is where the current flows from the drain pin to the MOSFET PQ5002 pin sources and also from the PQ5005 MOSFET pin sources to the drain pin and at this point the VIN line actually has a supply voltage from the battery. Because the VIN line already has 11.1 volts, Automatically the gate MOSFET pin also has a voltage of 11.1 volts coming from PR3. Underneath it is a PR6 resistor connected to the MOSFET N-channel PQ5004. And at this time the MOSFET condition is not active because the gate MOSFET pin PQ5004 is still not triggered by high logic from the EC controller. So the PQ5002 MOSFET pin gate remains in the close condition because the MOSFET pin source and gate voltages are the same. This is an important point where the PQ5002 will become fully active. And PQ5002 is ready to pass a large current according to the maximum amperage limit of the MOSFET. When the D forward slash C sharp signal changes from low to high the PQ5004 will become active because the gate pin has a voltage of 3.3 volts coming from the EC controller or KBC. When PQ5004 becomes active pin drain and sources will open as if short circuited to ground. So there is a change in the voltage at the gate MOSFET pin PQ5002 which was originally 11.1 volts down to 2.8 volts. In this situation if the gate voltage on the MOSFET PQ5002 is less than the source's voltage then the PQ5002 will be fully active or open. When does the D forward slash C sharp signal change from low to high? When we install the battery even though the EC controller is working, this signal is still in a low condition. But if we plug in the AC adapter or when we press the power button, the EC controller will change from low to high via the GPIO pin. 
In this video only discusses the laptop turning on only using the power source from the battery, without the AC adapter. In the next video what will happen if we plug the AC adapter, and how the charger block circuit transfers the power source from the battery to the AC adapter. If friends like this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on the bell button. Thank you.